Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, what a fantastic day we have had so far with uh, many interesting topics and sessions and meeting during the FICA breaks and so on. Uh, both me and Matthias, we will, um, let's see, uh, here. Um, we will talk a little about local innovations here in Sweden actually. We did a quite good um, session today after everything we have seen uh, from the US for example and the rest of Europe today. Um, Yes, my name is David Ostlin. Uh, I'm representing a company called Sigma IT Consulting, which is uh, one of the largest uh, consultancy firms in Sweden. And uh, I'm the director for IoT and eHealth. Yes, and my name is Matthias Ekman uh, from Microsoft, responsible for the business development within healthcare. And uh, as Donne mentioned, the uh, PhD in quantum physics. And so I will try to. Uh, explain how that falls together. Yes. So, we are in the beginning of something really large at the moment. Uh, many have talked about the, the new paradigm, the fourth industry uh, revolution. And what we see is that this is not only something that is central for the healthcare sector. We see it in all the, the, the different sectors at the moment. Healthcare is Regarding to, to the numbers that the Gartner Group came up with, uh, uh, it's worth around 1.9 trillion uh, dollars, actually. Um, so, let, let us look at some good examples, actually, from Sweden. Then. Uh, the first one is Nordic Health Innovation, um, which is a company, a, a startup company in the northern part of Sweden. Uh, they came up with a solution called uh, Virtual uh, Care Rooms. And we will come back to that in the end and show a video from the first implementation of the solution. The other one, I really like this one. Uh, Koala Life is the company behind the new, uh, you can call it a heart monitor. Uh, you can record the sound actually from the heart and you can uh, see it in the mobile app, but you can also want to, to share it with your doctor, for example. They will soon come out to the market, and we can talk a little bit more about it later on. Yeah. So I guess that we have talked a lot about that the data will be the new currency, but in many aspects, there will be generated a lot of data, but it's in fact the algorithms on top of the data that will bring the new values. And uh, I really like uh, the thing that Optolexia is a small startup based from Karolinska Institute. They have, in fact, been able to, to, by using machine learning, by recording the eye movement when a child is reading, taking that pattern and doing machine learning on top of that, and in just a matter of seconds, detect if a child has uh, possibly reading disabilities. The average age today in Sweden to detect a child is about 13 years old. And today they have started to screen uh, children already at the age of seven. And the only thing that we know with reading disabilities is that you sh should start to read a lot when you are young. So this is really empowering people to, to get the best out of, of, of life. Uh, and as I said, uh, when it comes to this with, with data and these algorithms, uh, we are in fact entering a new world because the big question is how do you create all these algorithms that is needed? And this case is really interesting because we have gathered a lot of data around uh, women in the third world uh, and taken this data and published this data and started a machine learning competition uh, that will end the 1st of October. You see the leaderboard here. But the purpose of that is, in fact, to crowdsource the patterns that can detect uh, risk patterns for women in the third world having uh, challenges when they gave birth, for example, or HIV. So I, I really think that when we start to enter this new world of Internet of Things, we also really need to try to reinvent the, thing, the way we bring values from the data, and, and the crowdsourcing aspect is, is a really interesting part. Uh, but the main thing also is that to bring these um, patterns or, or suggestions into real value for, for citizens and patients. And, and this um, company 
Contigo Care, it's a Swedish company that has, together with a mobile phone and this smart device, if you have problems, say sober, you randomly can do tests and then the care organization can follow you and if they detect the uh, challenges in, in the patterns, they can call and assist you to help you stay sober. So it's really about trying to get values out of data, but change or achieve some goals in life that I think is really important. And, and what we have seen then, if you should start this journey as an innovators, it's extremely important to find some global assistance. Of course, Microsoft is a global company, but we really see that on top of this kind of infrastructure, one needs really an industry partner like Sigma to, to take care of a lot of things that is needed to do in collecting and storing information so you can focus on, on, on the key values. And as stated in the last talk, really find what you are best in. So, yeah. how do uh, we get uh, started? Yeah, exactly. And the conclusion that we see is that we, we are meeting a lot of innovators every day, actually. And uh, our conclusion is to think big and start small, but get going. Uh, a lot of the people we meet have great ideas, uh, but they are still waiting and waiting and waiting, and somebody else is coming up with the same idea. So, get going, but start small. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's time for the video, actually. Det är ju en del av livet. Och få vara frisk. En stor del. Slussfors är ju en liten by precis mitt emellan två stycken orter, Storuman och Tärnaby. Där man har ungefär lika långt åt båda hållen till sin vårdcentral. Utmaningen för svensk sjukvård, inte minst för Norrland, och det är ju en långa avstånd, men också svårighet att rekrytera personal till alla våra delar av landet. Jämtland här i Dalen så har vi en befolkning som är äldre än genomsnittet i landet. Och det är många som är 80 plus och 85 plus. Det är den åldern som man insjuknar och behöver välfärd på alla sätt för att kunna bibehålla sin livskvalitet. Men tjenare Carl Gunnar, hur är stackarna är det vi blir? Ja, det är bra. Är det? Ja. Hur mår du då? Ja, så det. Ena dagen är det bättre än den andra sen. Ja. Jo, så är det bara. Har man en åldrad befolkning vill man komma nära. Man vill komma nära sina patienter. Ett sätt att göra det är att använda modern teknik. Kan man ta prov på sig själv? Kan man monitorera? Det går att göra i ett virtuellt rum. Ett vårdrum utan läkare. Här låter ju lite kusiskt. Här måste jag säga. Jag gick dit bara för jag var rent nyfiken. Första gången jag besökte det virtuella vårdrummet på skolan i Slussfors fick jag sett mig där till en stor och så tog de, de här första proverna. Men du har ju diabetes. Ja. Vad kunde man göra åt här om man tack och ta emot? Så är det ju. Och så fick jag ju lite medicin och spruta. Och jag har sedan dess klarat mig jättebra. Det var ju fantastiskt. Hej Anna-Lisa, hur står det till? Jo tack, det är bra. Jag ser att du har tagit ett blodtryck och det ser ju helt normalt ut. Bra att veta. Du har inte haft några symptom eller känningar sedan du började med insulin? Nej, allt har gått, allt har gått perfekt. Men i så fall så avslutar vi väl här och så ses vi om några veckor igen. Ja, absolut. Har det gått? Detsamma, detsamma. Mm. Hej då. Hej då. Så fort du skulle uh, ha far i det eller gjort någonting så skulle du ju väg mig till Storuma. Och här är sex och en halv mil att fara. Och fy och vad grejer det var här. För de som behöver är det ju en himla vid skillnad att bara kunna få gå hit ner på vårdrum. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
här är det bästa vi har gjort. Så det här är bara frågan om att vi har förstånd om att uppskatta det här. Tekniken ger ju nu möjligheter som aldrig har funnits tidigare. Vi jobbar med bland annat Indonesien men även Kenya. De har andra sjukvårdsbehov. Mödradödlighet under graviditeten är ett stort problem i de här länderna. Och där vi i Sverige har ganska bra system för att fånga upp riskgraviden. Det går att göra i ett virtuellt rum. Tekniken som är utvecklad för våra gamlingar i Sverige rädda liv på mödrar och barn i Afrika. Då lever vi i en global värld. Ja, yeah. so that was a great example on the innovation company NHI, and uh, they were here last year and uh, showing their prototype, and now they are rolling out the solution both in the northern part of Sweden, but actually also uh, in Indonesia and uh, in Africa at the moment. So it's a fantastic uh, case, actually. Yeah. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Please stay on stage. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, friends, Kate. Okay, okay, yeah. By the, by the way, before, before, you, uh, before I let you in, uh, I have some news. I, th I hear that we're trending with third or fourth on Twitter right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're trending on fourth right now on Twitter in Sweden. Okay. Uh, and that is because we are all using the hashtag DHD16. So uh, keep on going on with using uh, the hashtag and get into the conversation with us. Yeah. The Americans um, are just waking up now, so we should be hearing from them soon. Exactly. It's happened exactly. in the past. Exactly. We're just getting the, the US tweets in now. Uh, and uh, don't, every, don't forget, everybody here, you ask questions to everybody here by going that way. So DHT16. Now, over, over to you. And over to you. Questions? <laughs> comments? <laughs> We definitely have questions. Um, I loved your presentation. I love the idea of kind of necessity is the mother of invention um, and really helping people who live on the outskirts. A lot of people that live in the cities forget uh, what it's like to actually not live by medical care. I'm going to ask you the same thing that I asked the last participant about opening data versus not, and especially um, because you're an academic involving the university. I'm getting my PhD in biomedical engineering, and it's much harder, much, much harder than it should be to get data and analyze it. No, I, I agree with you. It's, I mean, this whole industry will build on trust. And it's extremely uh, important to handle data according to, to the way that the owners would like to have that. Uh, and we are performing, um, together with this, some of the universities, uh, uh, ethics in big data. Because I think that will be one of the main challenges going forward to, to really get out the values that we, in some way, understand what kind of rules that needs to apply to get out the values as your last comment. Because if you just store the, the data too close to our cells, then we will not solve the challenges for the non-communicable diseases or cancer or, or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, we're all part of a really uh, decent uh, revolution in, yeah. in humanity. And I think we need to remember we have to get back and, and give, to, give to science and give to others in this situation. Yeah. So uh, thank you for that, um, Bastian. Yeah, I, am, uh, I have something that I want to ask you uh, in terms of you, you are part of a big company. Uh, you're Microsoft, you collaborate with Ericsson, and you have different spin-off companies that, that are doing a lot of work in the field of digital health. Um, but when you're looking, I, I just asked the, the same questions to, to the three uh, previous presenters that were sitting in here. Um, what do you think, and especially when you're dealing with elderly people uh, that have not been using technology for so long in their lives, what do you think is the biggest issue uh, and the, the biggest struggle when you're uh, uh, introducing technology to a group of people that have never used technology on a daily basis? Yeah. Um, that's a really good question, actually, because we have also seen a couple of solutions that it's very hard to, to roll out, actually. Uh, and, but if we look on the cases, the latest where we have been working, we, we have been starting with the patients in, in, the, in the middle. And 
we have been uh, introducing them very early in the process, so they have come in with very, very good ideas. And for example, you have Annalisa here. She was very curious about new technology, and she, she really wants to be one of the first that were, were trying this out also. So uh, I think you, you very important to not be too focused on, on the te te technology. Actually, you need to focus on the, on the patient in the middle. Hmm. I think that's very important. And I should say one comment I'm we see for, for this Swedish uh, 1177. I mean, one of the largest groups are elderly people. So I, I would like to challenge people that's talking about this issue. This issue maybe was an issue 10 years ago, but we are now facing the challenge to solve a problem that will appear in, in, in the time frame of about 10 years. And that uh, elderly people in 10 years will not be so uh, re reluctant to digital te technology. So I think, I think that, of course, we should be aware and be included in diversity and all that stuff, but, but uh, we should also embrace that a lot of people uh, do, at least in, in the richer part of the world, mm. have, have smartphones and uh, all that stuff. Then I should say, if you go to Africa, the challenge is more like to have connectivity. Mm. It's not the technology per se, it's a, how do you connect parts of the rural part of Africa. Yeah, because that, yeah. Is, that, that actually goes into the, the second thing that I wanted to ask you. You're talking about this is a group of people that eventually will fade out of society. Of course, uh, elderly people uh, uh, will fade out of society, but it will not take away that there's still a group of people, even right now in their 50s or in their 60s that have always been using manual labor, that have been working in the mines, that not have been using computers for, on a daily basis. Um, that even with the technology that we're seeing right now, like uh, as I told you before, I have this, uh, this little piece of device that just constantly monitors my, my blood sugar. Uh, and even when we're talking about things like that, a simple sensor that just shows you your blood glucose, they are very uh, afraid of using something like that because it is intrusive. It's something new uh, and it's something that, that they have never experienced before. And studies have shown that uh, there is a, a barrier between this group of people and technology that has to be taken away before technology can actually succeed. So I'm very interested, as, especially when you're talking about introduction in, in India and in Africa, in Kenya, for, for in, this, uh, in this case, how you are going to address these issues with people that have never been exposed on a daily basis to technology. Because technology can be a solution, but it can also be a curse for some people as well. Yes, I can only agree with you, and I, I mean, you, you need to build in that in, in the rollout and in the process. Uh, so so I, I have no simple answer how to solve that. But, mm. but I also think that we, we need to look at digital technology as a way of breaking the outside. We see that for refugees and, and newcomers, how how we, in fact, if you look at it from a systemic perspective, we could, in a better way, use digital technology to, to break uh, the outside uh, part of the society. But, of course, we need also to solve the, the parts where digital technology cannot enter or, or people do not have money to, to buy a phone or, mm. or whatever. So it's, ex it's extremely, and that's why this is a, 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 a national uh, issue. You cannot solve it uh, by yourself or as a company. It, it's, uh, and if you look at the UN's goals for sustain, sustainable, uh, global sustainable goal, I mean, the number three is health and well-being. So, mm. so it, it's a challenge, but we all need to contribute in the way we can. Okay. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll quote you on that, Elizabeth. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> the thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bert. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hand for them. Yeah.